So this is very moving. We are here at the Karl Beckstein Piano Center of Beijing, People's Republic of China. And they own this incredible instrument, historical instrument. This is the Beckstein, which belonged to Hans von Bülow. Hans von Bülow, the great conductor, pianist, and composer of the 19th century. And I just sight read, especially for you, a part from his beautiful ballad, Opus 11. This is such a romantic music. We are really swimming in pure romantic era of 19th century. And you know that uh, von Bülow was the first husband of Cosima, the daughter of Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt who also had a Beckstein in Weimar. And then <coughs> Richard Wagner took Cosima from von, uh, von Bülow. Well, before that Bülow arranged his uh, opera, the Die Meistersinger von Nuremberg, the famous opera of Wagner, for piano solo. to play this music on the piano of von Bülow. Just wonderful. And so on. Well, <clears throat> all I can say is that it is great a great experience for any pianist <coughs> excuse me to be able to play on any great piano and uh, of course several brands have great pianos but some of them have something very special because of history when one thinks that before the second world war Beck, the Beckstein piano was the favorite piano of all the greatest uh, pianists they recorded on Beckstein, they performed concerts on Beckstein. When you think that Debussy said that it's the only piano uh, for which uh, one should write piano music, when you think that Rachmaninoff 
uh, composed his uh, first two concertos on a Beckstein, and so many other composers and pianists used it. Well, I was wondering why, after the Second World War, uh, the Beckstein somehow disappeared, you know? Well, it's very simple. During the Second World War, as you know, Germany was destroyed by the bombs, and the factories of Beckstein were also destroyed by the bombing. So it took them a lot of time to rebuild an image, a real good image. I remember 30 years ago when I was uh, recording for Teldec exclusively in the 80s, I chose a Beckstein for five CDs, the Eroica Symphony arranged uh, by Liszt, the Eroica Symphony number no. three of Beethoven arranged by Liszt, also a CD with uh, four Bach piano concerti, with the Franz Liszt Orchestra, Chamber Orchestra of Budapest. I also accompanied uh, the great British uh, singer, uh, Margaret Price, in 17 leader of Liszt, and so on. And then that piano was sold. I couldn't get it any longer. I used it for my first recital at the Berlin Philharmonic uh, uh, Great Hall and the Musikverein of Vienna and also in Concertgebouw of Amsterdam, also at the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées in Paris, when I played uh, the Eroica Symphony and the Schubert Last Sonata. And uh, recently, I found out that Beckstein uh, manufactured a new concert grant, so I went to Berlin in December 2015 to try them, and I was really impressed. Then I decided to record a CD on the new concert run of Beckstein. And this CD is called Elective Affinities. Why? First of all, I wanted to show several aspects of this piano because I personally believe that the responsibility of the pianist is huge when he or she plays on a, any piano. Uh, it is his or her responsibility to get the best from the piano, whatever quality has the piano. Of course, now we are talking about a Rolls Royce uh, of pianos with, uh, uh, with Beckstein. Uh, but even if you play on a less good piano, whether it's Beckstein or any other brand, it is our responsibility to get the best from it, right? So I didn't want to make a CD with just a mixed salad, I would say, of piano pieces. I wanted it to have a concept. Beckstein is a typical German great piano. And the idea was to group pieces uh, by two, sometimes by three, and, some, and one time by four. Uh, I'll explain more in a few seconds. Uh, not just German. Germanic music, uh, the idea was to group them with the concept, through the concept of affinity. What is affinity? Affinity is one of the definitions, is the affection, the friendly feeling or the love feeling two people have uh, between themselves, mutual affection. It's also possible to describe affinity as some common denominator, you know, some uh, mut uh, common point between two things or entities. And uh, as you probably know, the most famous novel of Goethe was called Elective Affinities. Why? Because Goethe was fascinated by the discovery uh, in chemistry during his lifetime, they found out that when two elements have affinity between themselves, when they match, when they match, their components also will have further affinities between those two elements. And he wrote his famous novel, Elective Affinities, on that subject, 
It's the story of two couples, man wife, man wife, who spend, I think, holidays together, who spend some time together. And the man of a couple A falls in love with the wife of the couple B, <coughs> and vice versa. Excuse me. The husband of couple A falls in love with the wife of couple B, and vice versa. So the two first pieces of the CD are based on texts of Goethe. Um, I think we have the first uh, recording ever of the piano version, piano arrangement of uh, Egmont, the famous overture by Beethoven based on Goethe. Um, this arrangement was made during the lifetime of Beethoven. There is no proof that he might have uh, done himself this arrangement, but it's possible that Beethoven himself did it because we know through letters to his editor, to his publisher, that he was aware of that arrangement. And it's uh, grouped with a beautiful lead song of Mendelssohn called Suleika on a text of Goethe, uh, but to be more precise, the text was on a famous uh, great poetess of that time uh, who Goethe knew. And then we have another example of affinity, for example, uh, titles. Schumann was the first ever to use uh, the title novelette, which means a small novel in uh, some of his uh, pieces. And almost no other composer used it. Uh, one of them was Francis Poulenc, the French composer. So we have two pieces, two novelettes by Schumann and Poulenc, um, linked, of course, through the title novelette, and so on. So the CD has also, for example, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, I recorded the 13th Hungarian Rhapsody of Liszt and one of the most famous waltzes of uh, Johann Strauss, uh, Wiener Blut, Viennese Blood, arranged by Edward Schütt, who was a great pianist in the 19th century, born in St. Petersburg, in Russia. Or you have, for example, another group of two pieces, um, Ravel, Les de Ronette, Impératrice des Pagodes, which is for four hands. Uh, there is a two hands arrangement by a friend of Ravel uh, called uh, Jacques Charlot. And I choose this piece because it has a Far East flavor. It could be Chinese music. And I put it together with one of the most famous songs in China called the Liwang River. It's based on, uh, on the river Liwang. And this is a song during the um, uh, kind of tribute to the revolutionary times of Mao Zedong. And you also have, uh, let me give you just one or two more examples. Uh, Chopin, a mazurka of Chopin, a mazurka by the friend of Chopin, Julian Fontana who was responsible for a lot of publishing of Chopin's music, and he was also an excellent pianist and composer. He was from Poland also. A little tribute by Schumann on uh, Chopin, called Chopin, which is part of his carnival. And a piece I wrote as much as possible, trying to get closer to the style of Chopin. Why? Because I believe that in order to increase our understanding about a composer, it is a good exercise, as we say in French, exercice de style, a style exercise, to try to compose a piece in the style of that composer. This piece is called Merci Monsieur Chopin. Thank you, Mr. Chopin. And I did it also with Rachmaninoff, uh, a piece called Goodbye Mr. Rachmaninoff. And this is linked with one of the most extraordinary preludes of Rachmaninoff, which is also linked with a beautiful, very much uh, at, at, uh, 
in the Rachmaninoff style, prelude also in B, in B flat minor, like the prelude of Rachmaninoff, a beautiful prelude written by an American composer, not so famous in Europe, who was a close friend of Rachmaninoff. His name was Abram Chazins. So I'm going to play it on this beautiful concert grand Bechstein, a modern piano, of course. Um, excerpts from all these pieces which are on the CD called Elective Affinities. <laughs> 